Um, Depends which one you're going to use. <laughs> Greg Dykes plans. His suggestion right. that there, there are too many foreign players in the Premier League and he'd like to reduce that number and increase the number of English players. Not a huge amount of detail in thinking how we go about it, but what are your thoughts? Um, I can see the the thinking behind the plan. Um, obviously, at the top level of the Premier League, which is the strongest league in world football, in my view, then you want elite players playing in in that competition. Obviously, uh, um, it's a world game now, and the Premier League re reflects that. So. You want the best players in the world playing. If they're non-EU players, then obviously they would want, or clubs would want those type of players to still be coming to to the Premier League to play their trade. It's the the only thing with it, from my point of view, is I think we we look to implement rules quite rigidly, and uh, and we we adhere to the rules more often than not. Um, any FIFA directors or UEFA directors, we we seem to be the country that always adheres to those rules, whereas other European countries may be a little bit lax in terms of their, um, the way they interpret it, interpret the, the same rules and, and the consequence of that is, is that you'll get good players that possibly might come and enhance the Premier League, they, they won't be allowed in and they will go elsewhere. I can understand, we, we want British, young British players to, to play in the, in the highest league because that's how they develop. But, uh, you still want the top players playing here. It's coming a week when Stoke have announced this new US Academy initiative. Um, have you been involved in that? Is that something you've, you've No, it's about? it's uh, something I think it's been in uh, a project that the, the club's been progressing for a number of number of years, and I think it's an exciting one. Obviously, it's uh, it's important that uh, we try and bring good young players. To, to the club and, and train them and, and get them ready for the, the rigours of the, the Premier League and uh, this is just another arm of our development um, and recruitment strategy so uh, uh, we hope it's we hope it's successful. Do you see America as a, as a fertile ground and, and maybe that's a place where more and more talent will come from for the Premier League? Well we, we've got good connections there and we've uh, obviously brought uh, good players from from the states and the they, they've had an impact for us and, and done well for us and um, that's what we're trying to obviously uh, continue to do um, not notwithstanding obviously that uh, we still try and develop players in, from the local area and uh, within the boundaries that were set by the Premier League so uh, um, we're very much in a club that is looking to to enhance our development of young players because in the past we haven't really produced enough players for, for the first team so obviously we've spent a lot of money on our academy in terms of facilities and buildings and uh, now we need to uh, make sure that we're, we're producing players from that. Good man, thank you. Um, have you had a chance to reflect and explain to us how you can win at the Etihad and then lose at home to Leicester? <laughs> well it's the beauty of sports because um, that can happen, I mean you, we had a great performance, great result um, by adhering to a certain game plan and, and frustrating the opposition and to a certain extent that's that's what happened to us against Leicester. Um, they took their chances, uh, took their, one of their few chances they created and on the day we, we weren't able to, to convert any number of chances that we created. We had any any number of corners I lost count towards the end but uh, we just needed something just to fall for us. I felt on the day if we'd have scored first, which is vitally important, you, you hear me time and time again talking about how the about the importance of the first goal in the Premier League and if you look at the results that weekend um, I think it was only Chelsea that were able to come back from conceding the first goal so that tells you how difficult it is to, to overcome teams when when you go behind so uh, we, we know we can do better I thought the, the performance was better than our performance against Villa in our first game so uh, uh, we're not a million miles away uh, I think in terms of our defensive work we've conceded not too many goals, and in terms of the league overall, we're, we're pr probably towards the top end for for our defensive work. But that doesn't show in terms of the points we've been able to accrue. So, uh, um, the name of the game is to obviously win football matches, score first if you can, and uh, and see where it takes you. The other side of that is is goal scoring, which is I, I think something you, in fairness, you've probably had as your biggest issue since you since you arrived here. You, you focus on trying to get a striker and getting. Um, Mamadou Finn and people like that, but 
27 shots, six on target, and, and no goal against Leicester. Is that an area of concern for you? Um, well, that that can. I mean, those stats can can illustrate that. But um, I'm I'm confident that uh, the players that I have here this year uh, will address that. Uh, yeah, we did have a problem on occasions during the season in terms of a lack of goals, and maybe that certainly hindered us in in certain periods of the season. But overall, we came through towards the back end and. Um, I just feel we've we've got enough quality in the squad. Uh, we've added different types of players as well, uh, players that will give us different options under different circumstances. So uh, uh, I feel quite confident com confident in the the ability of the players that I have that will will address the the amount of goals that we scored last year. Even last year we we improved on on recent seasons anyway by something like ten ten or more goals. So uh, if we can have a similar improvement, then then we'll be pleased. Harry Redknapp said his press conference today. I don't know if you've seen what's come out of it, but he's he said he'd still like to sign Peter Crouch. He says he's still admiring him, um, even though the window's closing. He's uh, he's still talking about him. Does that bother you? Might that unsettle you? Well, I'm sure Harry gets asked about lots of players that uh, he's interested in, and uh, he's always very honest in his appraisal of, of players. He's he's worked with Peter, so he knows. At least he's got an insight into Peter as a player. So uh, um, I'm sure if. He felt there was an opportunity to bring him to the club, then uh, then he would say so. So um, uh, Peter's doing very well for for ourselves, and uh, we're very happy that he's here. Uh, we didn't encourage any bids for any of our players in the summer, so uh, it was even if he didn't make a call, he didn't didn't make it to me. So uh, it wouldn't have got very far anyway. Is there something he might think about revisiting in January or beyond? I have no idea. No idea. Possibly. Your first trip back to QPR um, after your ten months there, and I wonder how you look back at that time because you kept them up is the, is the bottom line, and then things didn't go well at the start of that season. You lose your job, then the next manager comes in and gets them relegated, keeps his job. Um, it's a strange old job, football management sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, it, it was a difficult period, um, difficult job when I first went into the club. Uh, had something like it was sixteen, seventeen games, I think, towards the end of the season, and uh, we needed to. To do a job and and keep keep QPR in in the league, which we were very grateful and very happy to do so. But uh, it was disappointing that the following season. Obviously, we made a lot of changes, and um, you make the changes for what you think are the right reasons and and for reasons that you feel will enhance the club and allow the club to flourish and prosper and and be stronger in the future. But uh, sometimes it doesn't come off, and you have to hold your hands up. Um, uh, on paper, uh, the players were were very good players, but the combination and the, the dyma dynamic of the dressing room just didn't work. Um, sometimes you can't envisage that happening uh, until you actually bring all the group together. So it was a difficult time. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, I was judged on results, and my results at the beginning of of the season weren't good enough, so I lost my job. So I accept that. Um, I was uh, obviously. Uh, the figurehead of the club at that time, and uh, I was making decisions on the football field that, uh, unfortunately, didn't allow us to win. So uh, um, uh, I haven't got any cross to bear whatsoever because uh, I understand the nature of this game. I've been in it a long time as a player and a manager, and and if if you don't don't get the results that uh, the powers to be think you should be getting, then you're at risk. And uh, in the end, uh, I lost my job. Do you think what sort of reception do you think you'll get back at Loftus Road? Um, well, the impression I get is that it won't be a great one, um, which is understandable because um, obviously since that time there's a lot been said. I haven't said a great deal about it because uh, I don't think there's any need to. Um, it was a difficult time for everybody. Uh, um, we all were trying to to make the club successful. It wasn't if we were there to try and uh, damage the club or or hurt the club for the future, that wasn't the intention. Everybody was working to the same end to, to try and make them a stronger and better club. Uh, it didn't work for me initially in that opening period of the season. Um, but then you just have to pick yourself up and, and move on. So uh, obviously uh, QPR fans will, will remember that time and it wasn't great for anybody connected to the club. So uh, um, if they feel they need to vent that frustration towards me, I take it take on. On my shoulders, I'm, I'm a big guy now, so uh, I've been in the game a long time. I've had a lot of stick over the years from a lot of people, so uh, um, so be it. 
finally from me, on a much more positive note, the job you're doing here at Stoke is, seems to be being recognised by everybody and, and the powers above you as well. Have you had a conversation with them yet about your contract? Because I know there's, there's potentially moves to to extend that or, or write a new one up. Um, I've had no conversations to that end. Um, I think there was a report last week suggesting that uh, uh, there may be talks uh, in the future. I hope so because um, I'm very happy. It's uh, it's a great club. Um, I'm, I'm always and always will be forever grateful for the opportunity to come here because uh, obviously I came under difficult circumstances and maybe my my star had faded somewhat. So. Uh, um, uh, the coach's family uh, placed a lot of faith in my ability and uh, I'd like to think last year I was able to repay some of that faith. I've still got a number of years left on my con contract and uh, I hope to see you around. Good one. Thank you. Very honest of you talking about Queen's Park Rangers. Was that probably one of the toughest times in, in your managerial career? Oh yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, because a lot of people were working exceptionally hard, myself included, and the staff in around the club and we were trying to make it work. and. Uh, we made we made big decisions and we had to make big decisions because I felt at the end of the season that the the squad wasn't strong enough to to stay in the league the following year unless we made changes. So uh, um, obviously we had the opportunity to to do that. Um, I think the feeling is probably too many came in at the same time, uh, but there was a big turnover anyway because we were at the end of the season. A lot of people were out of contract. So there was always going to be a big turnover. So uh, from my point of view, I just wanted to try and increase the quality that I had at my disposal. Um, but as I said earlier, uh, you're never sure quite how the dynamic of the group is, is going to, uh, to 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 work itself out. And um, unfortunately, um, when you don't win games, then any issues within the group or, or any issues that they had with me or my staff, then that, that will manifest itself in obviously Poorer performances, and that's that's what happened. We needed a couple of uh, uh, easy wins uh, just to get ourselves and run, settle everybody down, and understand what direction we wanted to go to. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to do that, and um, in the end, you have to say it was probably the right decision. And when you left, was it inevitable that they were going to go down? Did you think really that there was more there that they could have stayed up? I felt there were still good players there. Um, I felt it would have been. Um, you, you can never say hindsight's a wonderful thing, as we know. But uh, I felt we we could have turned it around. It. Um, there was still a, a number of games left. I think 20, 25, 26 games. I think left. Um, it's been done before. Um, I think it was done last year at Crystal Palace. So uh, th there were still good players in the building. But I just, as I said, uh, if the dynamic of the group isn't isn't great, which it wasn't, then uh, sometimes you have to make uh, even more changes and I think that's what Harry tried to do in the January. Uh, unfortunately it didn't happen for him, but fair play, he got them back up last last year and uh, they're back in the Premier League and uh, I wish him well. He said it wasn't a good atmosphere at the club when he inherited it. Compare and contrast the so-called bad atmosphere at QPR with, a, I'm guessing, a good atmosphere you've got here at Stoke now. Yeah, it, it was difficult. It was difficult when, when I walked in because uh, the atmosphere wasn't wasn't easy. There was a little bit of resentment around the place, but uh, you try and address that. And um, it was more difficult than I than I found, to be perfectly honest. But uh, different when I came here. Uh, it was a good, strong group uh, who were used to winning Premier League games and had been in the Premier League a long time. And I think that was the the key difference uh, in terms of the group um, and the dynamic of the group. Um, the squad here was used to understanding what it took to win Premier League games. They've been in their league for five, six seasons. Um, the QPR group was one that was evolving, and I'd only had the the benefit of six months in the Premier League when I when I took over. So that's a key key factor in terms of being able to deal or have that understanding or knowledge of what it takes to win Premier League games. Can I just ask you, what threat do you think QPR have? They're a very good team. Uh, you look at uh, the quality that Harry's brought in, there's some very good players there. Um, I watched them last week, they, they'll be disappointed with their performance last week, I think that's fair to say, because um, they weren't able to ask too many questions Manchester United, but in fairness, United were good on the day as well. Um, but certainly they, they want to look to bounce back from, from that performance, I'm sure. So at home, um, 
with the support that they get from the crowd and uh, it's, it's a difficult fixture and it's not one that uh, uh, we expect to win uh, in terms of being an easy fixture but certainly from our point of view we, we have enough ability to, to go there and, and, and expect to get a positive result. Any ins, any um, at the moment, uh, Johnny Walters is uh, a doubt. Um, he's just got an issue with his with his calf, so we'll check that tomorrow. But um, he's probably the the only one. Um, Marko Anatovic has um, got a problem with his foot as well, um, so we'll check that. But um, apart from that, that's it. Okay. Yeah, well, we've had two away games and uh, we picked up points in in both of them. Obviously, the the Man City uh, result and performance will will forget. I hope uh, very much in the in the mind and their mentality in terms of what's required when you go away from home in the Premier League. So, uh, uh, in terms of our away performance, it arguably they've been a lot better than our home performance, which um, is surprising, I would suggest, to, to most people, ourselves included. So, we want to. Be, Obviously, get back to winning ways. If we can do that on the road, so be it. Because um, we said at the beginning of the season that we wanted to improve our form away from home. At the moment, it seems that we we are able to do that. But uh, ideally, we, we want to marry home form and, and away form, and uh, that's what we'll be striving to do in the weeks to follow. You've gone away and got three points against Man City. For you to get three points against QPR, would that be kind of I don't know the cherry on the on the cake going back to your former clubs and taking points away from them this season? Well, no, we view it as the very next Premier League game, and um, that's our focus. Um, it's, as I've said, it's, it's not an easy fixture. Um, we, we're playing a team that's uh, come up from from the Championship, and um, as we've experienced last week uh, against Leicester, that's not easy because they still have the the flush of enthusiasm that that brings to to a team and a squad. So uh, uh, that will be difficult to overcome, but. Um, I do sense away from home we're probably better equipped than we were last year, uh, just because we've got uh, more more threats and, and different types of threats. So uh, um, I'm encouraged by what I've seen on the road. So uh, we've got to obviously produce it because uh, talk is easy. But uh, I sense, given that we we disappointed slightly ourselves last weekend in terms of obviously not getting maximum points, then. Obviously, we've got an opportunity this weekend to, to get more points on the board, and that's that's what will be our focus. Mark, there's concern among some fans that certain dynamic players are, sort of, uh, are falling out of favour. I mean, there's a tweet from the OK fans in who said, uh, uh, this is after the Leicester game, he says, the absence of Adam and Arnie today was baffling. If there are issues with these two, then they need to be resolved quickly. Is there any issues with these two? They don't seem to be... Uh, well, certainly no, no. Seem to be getting games. No, not at all. It's um, At the moment, we're... Uh, we probably, I think it's fair to say at the moment, we, we probably, initially at the beginning of the season, we probably had players at different levels of, of fitness, so we were trying to get everybody up to speed. Uh, since then, I think those issues probably resolved itself. Everybody's probably on the same level, but we probably have had fluctuations in fall, um, so there's probably players that are not quite at the level that they were uh, at the end of last season. Um, but. It's very early. We're, we're four games in. Uh, everybody knows that I'm going to use everybody this year. It's, it's not going to be a case of everybody will will remain in the team. It, it'll be uh, team will be picked on merit, um, but that's factoring in the opposition as well. So no, Charlie and, and Marco very much in my thoughts, and um, they will get games absolutely. Thank you, folks. Okay.